This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Weekdays from 10 a.m. on 98 FM. How do you feel? And I want to hear from you on this on 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp the program 0877 98 98 98. How do you feel about someone getting behind the wheel of a car after having smoked one or two uh, joints? How do you feel about knowing that someone on the same road as you may be stoned? Well, there's been a shocking 700% increase in the numbers of motorists uh, testing positive for uh, drug driving since roadside sampling was introduced last April. Uh, So a lot of people are doing it. There was a time when it was okay, socially acceptable, not frowned upon, for people to drink and drive. Now... Things have totally changed. And it is no longer socially acceptable for people to get in behind the wheel of a car uh, drunk. That attitude, though, um, doesn't prevail when it comes to uh, drug driving. For example, a message I just got in uh, a second ago says, I just passed my driving test last week under the influence of cannabis. Every lesson I had before the test, I was also under the influence. If you use cannabis regularly, it doesn't make you a dangerous driver. In fact, it made me a safer driver and more aware, in my opinion, says Sean in Dublin. Now, interestingly, when we tried to contact Sean, he wasn't available to uh, defend his, his position on this. Here's the thing. The reason drug testing was brought in is because you're not safe behind the wheel. That it has an effect on you. You don't smoke a joint just for the good of your health, you smoke a joint because of the effect that it has on you. And the effect has to impact your driving. Or maybe you don't believe that at all. Maybe you are a regular um, uh, smoker of whatever, weed or cannabis or whatever, and you think you're perfectly fit and capable to drive a car. If you do believe that, call me on 67979081. Dave, you're on 98FM. How are you, Dave? All right, Adrian. Good, Dave. What did you want to say on this? Um, no, obviously getting behind the wheel of a car, stoned is stupid. It's not really much of a question, like, in fairness, is it? Well, if, you, know. if you just heard that me- the guy's message that I just read out. Oh, yeah, I know. There are some people like that. There's some people that can drink a few pints, get in behind the wheel of a car, and they can drive okay. I know people who can get high as a kite, and there doesn't impact their driving at all. But that's that's the minority. Do you know what I mean? I smoke pot. I wouldn't smoke a giant and get into a car and drive. Do you know? You wouldn't. But then, okay. again, if I'm, if, then again, if I'm at home chilling out smoking a spliff, I have no intentions of getting into a car and driving anywhere. Do you know? Hence why I'm sitting down and smoking a spliff. Now, a lot of people um, believe that the reason drug testing was brought in, the roadside drug testing was brought in, is because. Yeah, but, yeah, but hold on a minute. But this whole roadside drug testing thing is also a bit of a farce at the same time, right? In what and way? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because. First of all, someone isn't going to take heroin and drive a car because they wouldn't be capable of doing it. Second of all, as someone who's on cocaine, cocaine stays in your system for about, it stays in your saliva for about nine hours. So if you've taken cocaine the night before, gotten a night's sleep, and you're done in the morning, it won't be detected. The reason there's been such an uptick and such high numbers of people being done for cannabis is because cannabis stays in your system for a long time. So I may have smoked a giant two days beforehand, I meet the guards and do a test, and I could fail because it's still in my saliva. No, we, but that was, you know, but you that know what, what they do then after that is they do a uh, follow-on impairment test. So if you fail the test on the roadside, they bring you off to the guard station and they do an impairment test. Um, if you smoked your joints two weeks ago or four days ago or whatever, you're not going to be impaired. I don't know about that, Adrian. I'm like, why, why would the numbers go up so high? Because I don't believe that there are that many people getting high and driving cars. I don't. Okay, but stay there for a second because the guy that sent in that message has decided to speak to me. Sean, you passed your driving test uh, after having smoked what? How are you, Adrian? How How are you, Sean? Good, thank you. Yeah, good. I passed my test under the influence of cannabis. So what would you have had before you did your test? Uh, I had a bong, so a water pipe. Right. And yeah, I passed the test. The road safety authority didn't see any uh, fault in my driving whatsoever. Okay, now obviously the road safety authority didn't realise you'd uh, smoked a bong before you went and did your test. Uh, no, they, they they didn't. But they definitely didn't see any um, 
impairment Any in your driving. In me driving, yeah. Now, um, you say in your message that you believe that it's actually made you, uh, makes you a, a safer, more aware driver, in your opinion. Absolutely, 100%. A safer, more aware driver? Yeah, because, like, I don't get so wound up if someone was to do something, like, silly behind me. There's no road rage, like, I'm... And why, would you, be like, would, you be like, would you be like that if you weren't smoking? Ah, no, like, but, like, you, you know yourself, like, we all get a bit of a bit of frustration when you're stuck in traffic and these sort of things, like... So do you believe that uh, your driving is not affected at all by uh, smoking a bit of dope? You know, I do think it's affected. I think it's improved, like, me oh, sorry, awareness. So it's, so it's affected in a positive way? Yeah, it's improved my awareness and consciousness on the road, absolutely. So why do you, do you, you obviously don't believe there was any need to bring in drug testing for cannabis, do you not? Well, um, no, not really, no. Because you're a better driver after smoking a spliff, so much so that you passed your driving test just last week. Yeah. Now, I think we had four grade one failures on the whole test. Four grade one failures? Did that a failure? Yeah, our grade two, then whichever one that you're allowed eight of, I was there. Uh, I only got four of. Okay, so you passed your test, you did all of your lessons as well after smoking a bit of dope, and you uh, believe that it makes you a better driver, not a worse driver. So it does affect your driving, but in a positive way. Yeah, well, it affected my driving in a positive way. It calmed me down. I was quite nervous starting to drive. So the cannabis calmed me down and stuff like that, you know. All right, stay there for one second. 67979081 is our telephone number. Uh, the next story is even more shocking. John, you're on 98FM. How are you, John? How are you, John? How are you, how are you then? John, methadone and the methadone program is used to... Stabilise it. Stabilise people who had been heroin users. That's right, that's right. So you yeah. are a methadone user. I am a day. 20 years I'm on methadone. 20 years you're on methadone? Yes. And on methadone, you drive a car, no bother? I've t I have a three years now claim bonus. And I pass my full licence. You know, uh, if, I was to go back to, if I was to go back to using drugs, taking drugs, I don't think I'd be able to drive. You know. No. You know, I wouldn't. So for, for, I, forgive my ignorance, because I'm not a methadone user. I'm, I've never been a heroin user. In fact, I never even smoke uh, a spliff. Um, methadone is a kind of a heroin substitute, is it not? It is, yes. And it does is. it not affect you at all? No, because I'm, I'm, I'm so immune to it now. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't affect me. You're so immune to it that it doesn't affect you? No, no, it wouldn't affect me. Now, if you were to do a roadside test for drugs, would you fail that test because you've no. taken methadone? No, I passed. I actually passed all that. I passed out. I passed everything. I passed my charity test. Front, you know, great. No, no, no. I'm talking about a roadside drug test. If you were to be drug tested at the side of the road, would you fail because you've because you're a methadone user? But, but I have a letter to say that I'm on, I'm on it. You know. You know. Right, so that would that would get you through, would it? No, it wouldn't get me through, but, you know... It might it cover like, you. Well, you'd hope it would yeah, cover you. It would cover me, yeah. So being on methadone simply stabilises you, but doesn't have any effect on you, is that what you're saying? No, it doesn't have any effect on me, Adrian. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because I'm so immune to it now. It just doesn't affect me. And did, it, did it originally? Sorry? When you started taking it at first, did it affect you? Oh, the property, I got to start, yes, yes, yes. But now it's just a, like a normal thing. But they get, I get prescribed me medication, that's it, you know. And that's, and that's all I take, is me methadone. Mm. I don't take anything else. Okay, so you're a methadone user, and you think you're perfectly safe behind the wheel of a car. Uh, Sean is a cannabis user, and he thinks he's perfectly safe behind the wheel of a car. Well, oh yeah, I, think, I, I, I actually think I'm safe behind the wheel of a car, you know, on methadone. Okay, you, you, know? fir you firmly believe you're safe behind the wheel of a car? 
Well, I'm at the, well, I'm three years no claim bonus, four years no claim bonus. And, you know... But all that means is you just haven't had an accident. Well, thank God. Yeah. You know, that goes to show you, well, you know, there's one more can I say. It, all, all I can say is it stabilises me. It does not... It does, it doesn't make me stone, it doesn't make me any different. It's just a minority it just stabilizes me. And that's you know But you're not I'm, you're not taking it for the effect that it has on you. You're taking it um for the stabilizing effect. And as, as somebody just texted in, so why take methadone if it has no effect on you? Well well, if I, if I was to stop taking methadone, I don't. I'd only go through all uh, sickness, and I'd, I'd probably be worse. You know, I'd have to. I'd have to go into treatment to come down off it, Adrian. So you don't believe, uh, John, that you being a methadone user is putting anybody's life in danger on our roads? No, I don't have to. But at the moment, no, I don't think I am at the moment. At the moment, you don't think you're putting anybody's no, life in danger. No, because I'm fine. No, because I'm, I'm actually all right. I'm actually feel grand at the moment. I'm not stoned. I feel like a normal person, as a normal as as everybody else. And you know, I mean, you, there's no difference in me. I, I'm not different than anybody else. I'm no different than anybody else. So what would happen if you stopped taking methadone? Yeah. Um, if you go through an awful lot of, you know, it's the withdrawal symptoms, Adrian. If it's the withdrawal symptoms, you'll be going through. You know, it's the sickness. So okay, stay, stay, stay there for a second. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Text or WhatsApp us 0877-989898. We're talking about drug driving. And like I said, there was a time 30 years ago where... It was perfectly acceptable to drink and drive. Everybody did it and uh, whatever. Uh, now it's just not anymore. Now it's just not acceptable and socially acceptable at all to drink and drive. And that's grand. Drug driving, though, is something that a lot of people are happy to admit. Yeah, I do it. In fact, Stephen, you uh, drive for a living. I and do. Uh, you've a joint every day behind the wheel. I do. And I'm throughout the day as well. Pardon me? I'm throughout the day as well. So, sorry, Stephen, can you turn down the radio in the background if you don't mind? Sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks yeah, very yeah, much indeed. Sorry, sorry, so, what, what sort of driving do you do? Well, I just drive for a living. I mean, no, there's you no drive point. trucks or cars or... No, I drive, I drive a car and I deal with the public all day long. You drive and a car I'm, and you deal with the public all day long. I okay. do indeed, yeah, and I'm very accomplished at my job. Um, I just had a smoke about 10 or 15 minutes ago before I left my house. So um, could, I, could I assume you're a taxi driver? No, no. No? No. No, okay. we won't say what I do. But okay, but you dri you okay. drive professionally. Well, I drive, you know, m well over a thousand kilometres every week. Oh, okay, um, okay, that's a Monday, fair bit. Of, Monday to Friday. That's a fair um, bit of driving, all right. And, and, uh, and every day before you leave the house, you'd have a joint. Yeah, and like, I, let me just make a point of, and I suppose it's not a very, very good point, but I'm driving since I'm 12 years old. I've never, ever had an accident. And um, let's say I'm driving nearly 30 years. Okay, if somebody and was I'm to say... That, I'm smoking that long as well. But if, say, if somebody was to come on this show and say, I've been drink driving for the last 30 years and never had an accident... Well, people... come here, if we had it... Come here, look, we all know somebody who's got drunk, irregardless of anybody smoking marijuana, hash, whatever the case may be. Um, we all know the difference between smoking a joint of hash, smoking a joint of heroin, smoking a, you know, drinking a bottle of whiskey, whatever the case may be. They're all completely different. You put somebody that's had a smoke of marijuana, they might laugh and they might eat lots of food, but they're not going to be falling all over the place. You have somebody who smoked heroin or methadone and maybe took a few tablets, there's going to be a complete different story. They're going to be more like a drunk person. When you're drunk, it's completely different to being stoned. Stoned heightens ability. And there's no way people can say it doesn't. It does. All drugs heighten does, your ability. Sorry, does, it does dope not make you sleepy? Dopey. No, no, there's different types of marriage. Like, there's different types of, there's, there's called sal salvias, and there's other types of smoke. Um, one's a headstone, and one would be more for mental things, and one would be for the body. So if you're smoking a salvia, your body's going to be stoned, but your mind's going to be okay. If you're smoking the other one, your mind is kind of enlightened, and your body isn't affected. So it's called indica or salvia. Okay, so you're types. saying, you're saying that you, uh, you're... Drug use, your cannabis use, has no effect on your driving. Absolutely none so at all. It would, I would be affected if I didn't smoke. 
You'd be affected if you didn't smoke. I would indeed, yeah. Because I'd be agitated. <clears throat> I'd be agitated. I'd be a little bit nervous. I'd um, be probably overcompensate. So I'd be like a, a learner driver. I've had a friend. She drove for many, many years. She'd done her driving test 10. And I'm not, this isn't even slightly exaggerated. She'd done her test 10 times and failed it. And she was in our house one day before she went to do her driving test. And I said to her, I said, such and such a person, I said, do you mind me asking, have you ever had a smoke? She goes, oh, no, 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 no. And I said, but why? You smoke every day and you've always smoked every mm. day. Would you not? So she had a smoke. And I, I, I'm not joking when I say she went and she passed with flying colours. Now, this girl had done it religiously 10 times and failed and done it in the same place and knows the route, but was just doing silly things because she didn't have a smoke and she wasn't relaxed. Okay, I, I, this is the bit that gets me about this conversation. You say that, if anything, as that guy Sean a couple of minutes ago said with his driving test, if anything, the uh, the drugs that you take are, are make your driving better. Um, if that be the case... Why take the stuff at all? I mean, you're saying it doesn't have an effect on you, per se. Because if I didn't take it, well, it does have an effect. What I mean is, you're saying does it have an effect like the traditional effect like you'd see in a movie, where somebody smokes a bong or smokes a hit of a joint and then stoned and it's like a heroin addict. We've all seen heroin addicts walking around town. That's what people presume from drugs. Marijuana isn't like that. You can do that to yourself if you want, but you'd have to smoke a fair bit. I obviously don't do that. I suppose the equivalent to me having a joint and the drink driving would be somebody having half a glass of beer, you know, having half a glass of wine with their dinner. What would be under the limit, but they would have some sort of a little effect from it. Mm. That, that makes sense. So I suppose that's where, we're, where you're bringing it into the fact of, you know, stoned. I mean, all I can say is I can guarantee you there's hundreds of thousands of people in this country that agree with every word I'm saying right now. But okay, people that have yeah, but smoked it, every day. Yeah, but why do you bother then if it just does nothing for you? Because I would rather not go and do the traditional thing that's fine and go and pay a doctor to get codeine tablets, which again is heroin and cocaine and all these things that you buy legally off a doctor, you know, and you take religiously every day that are highly more addictive like codeine tablets, Valium and things like that are more addictive than heroin, believe it or not. Um, somebody that's addicted to Valium tablets cannot just give up the Valium tablets one day. Somebody who's addicted to heroin can give up heroin one day. They'll have the worst cold they've ever had for four or five weeks. Mm. And I mean, like you will have, like this flu is, that people are going through at the mo- is nothing compared to what you feel. But you wouldn't die. Okay, Stephen, last year, we brought in um, new laws to enable the Gardaí to uh, drug test people on the side of the street. And yeah. you are somebody who just blatantly ignores the drug driving rules. Why do you think you, they, they don't apply to you? Well, I don't think that's fair. No, that's not fair that I blatantly disregard them. But you just I admitted mean, you do it every day. Look, but I'm not blatantly this. I'm not going out to blatantly just disregard it. They brought in a law without any education or anything at all. I mean, if you look into everything that's been done with THC and CBD oil in the last five to ten years, you'll realise that the benefits in society for it completely outweigh the stupid political influence it has by banning drugs. I mean, if they opened up the okay, case tomorrow... We're now, uh, Stephen, we're not talking about banning drugs or legalising drugs. We're talking about a law which makes it illegal yeah, but, yeah, for you... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Which makes it illegal for you to drive a car under the influence of cannabis or uh, a myriad of uh, other different drugs. But you ignore that every day. Yeah, but it'll be only cannabis with myself. And yes, I do ignore it every day. I don't think that the law is there for... For the purposes of marijuana. No, no, for the purposes of marijuana. But it is. But it is. Well, to me, it's not. You know, obviously, I don't take cocaine or That's like me saying, saying, um, you know, the drink driving laws, yeah, they apply to everything except... um, Except if you wanted to have a glass of beer, you could. Yeah, but not much. But but no, I I didn't smoke that much. That's what I'm saying to you. everyone's, Everyone's assuming that I'm going out in the car stoned. You're trying to imply that I smoke a joint and then I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do. If you, okay, if you were pulled in, if you were pulled in and you were tested at the roadside, would you fail I'd the test? I'd pass with flying colours. You'd pass the with only, flying colours? I'd pass with, the only thing I wouldn't pass would be this, the salvia test 
the sali- saliva, saliva test. test yeah. But the saliva test is works for two weeks. So if I smoked a joint today for the very first time in my life and I didn't smoke a joint for two weeks, the, the saliva test would still come up that I was dirty. Okay, but you would if pass they, it. You would pass. Them, you would pass they, an impairment test. Is that what no you're... problem? And if they decided to go deeper than that and take a drug test. The other thing, that because I'm a long-term marijuana user, it wouldn't matter if I gave up marijuana today, in five years' time, I would still have it in my system because it's a very long-term last. It could be in my system forever if I gave it up today. And at times it can be okay, gone let, and it let, can me, come back. let me read a message, and I'm starting to think this myself, okay? You are wasting your time, Adrian, talking to these people. There's nothing as arrogant as a drug user defending their drug. Right. Okay. What do you say and to you that? F- and you feel then you feel that you shouldn't be talking. So you feel that as well. Say that again. You feel that as well. So that's what one of your no, 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 no I, did, I didn't. I said I, I, I think I'm wasting my time because I don't think you have any. Why are you trying to change my mind into not smoking or something? Uh, the law wants to change. Well, your like, mind. I mean, you're not a counselor, so no, I, mean, no. I do this for certain reasons, and if that's what I'm saying about laws that are being brought in today, haven't been thought out. All right, because stay there, all the stay research that's been done with marijuana, hang on one second. All the research that's been done with marijuana have has proven many and scientifically proven in the last five years that it's benefit for many many things. But yet Ireland and other countries bring in laws instead of actually listening to research and doing the right thing and legalizing drugs and getting it out of all the criminals. Okay, but that, 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 making money from it. But that's not this conver- That's not the conversation. This isn't this conversation. The conversation is that, that we have laws which uh, now enable the Gardaí to do roadside tests to prevent people drug driving, but yes. you just give the two fingers to that. Um, well, if you want to put it that way, yes, okay. Okay. Do you ever dr- smoke it when you're driving, Stephen? Um, no, I wouldn't really smoke when I was driving. I'd pull over and have a smoke after my lunch or whatever, you know. Would you ever drive a car after smoking a spliff with a child in the car? Um, I suppose there's your answer there without saying anything really, isn't it? But, um. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that I didn't say no, because I don't want your, your phone there blown up, because I'm sure plenty of people will have... I mean, put it this way. People take Valium every day. Three times a day. I mean, I, hang on, I, hang on, I, Stephen. I, I, Stephen, hang, hang on, on, hang on. This conversation isn't about Valium. This conversation right now is about you smoking joints and having just admitted that you would drive a yeah, car with, uh, look, after here, smoking here, a joint here, with, it's, it's, with a child here, in the car. You, 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 want to sound, you want to make it sound as bad as possible for the radio and you, I usually you're doing want a good, to make no, it sound no, no. as good as possible. Stephen, you're doing a good so, enough job yourself. Oh, look, me, yeah, but you're helping. That's no problem. I'm being honest with you. As opposed to saying, oh, God, no, no, no. I'm being honest with you. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, same, why, that's what I want token, on this show. It, it, excuse me, though. In the same token, you want it for radio. I'm being honest with you. Yes, I do. If you don't want to say about coding, that's fine. But what I am saying to you is people take Valium three times a day. I smoke a joint. That's the difference. And you do it with a child in the car. Oh, well, I don't obviously do it with a child in the car, obviously. I don't even smoke cigarettes in my house. But, you, my would, but you would drive a car after having smoked a spliff with a child in the car? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay there. Uh, James, why are you furious over this? Uh, I had loads of things in my head when I there a few minutes ago. Just listen to that chap there. He's an absolute gobshaw. First and foremost, he uses this word, I drive for a living. Right? That's what he but said. Trying to stop people smoking so people can live, you know what I mean? Short and sweet. He's a gobshite. And he's not worried about being pulled in by the guards and breathalyzed or whatever, whatever test they do for this drug. And then that's they just living out the, the window. Sorry? They do a they saliva do a test. Uh, they do a yeah, roadside saliva, saliva test. And then. Well, if, 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 if he's trying to yeah, tell me that he's failed the saliva test. Sorry, if he's trying to tell me that if he's pulled in and they do the test, but he's going to pass the flying colours. No, he he's will. A pa- he's no. He's already said he would. Pa- he would fail the roadside uh, saliva test, but he says yeah. he would pass the impairment test, which is what happens afterwards. I would. He believes. No, uh, well, you, you, you've never actually. Do you, even me, you've never. You can't. You're making assumptions of something that you you see in the television. But you're not worried about your wife, your kids, or whatever. You're driving for a living, man, to make a few quid. You're, you're jeopardizing 
When the law yeah, is the law. Come here, look, look, I, look, I appreciate where you're coming from. You're looking at it from a different... If you knew me, it'd be no, a completely different story. From, from a common sense that the law is the law. If no, 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 not, the law. not for Stephen, it's not. Not for a lot you're of people, though. I'm, I'm just saying, Aiden, that the man said he's driving for a living. Right? Mm-hmm. He's jeopardizing that straight away. He doesn't, about, he doesn't give a shit about the ones that love him, that go out the margin, take a good look, you know, and all the best, you hope you come home safe. He doesn't care about anybody else. He only worries about him bloody self. Stephen, one of the points I made was 30 years ago, it was socially acceptable to uh, drink uh, and drive. Boy, 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 uh, boy, uh, boy. Yes, yeah, everybody sure. did it, okay? Yeah. Now it's not. And if I was having a conversation with somebody who said, I had uh, three pints and I drove home, people would be rightly angry. Yet you can't understand why people listening to you right now no, because, are also no, angry. You're, come here, hang on. Like I said to you earlier on, you're spinning it like I had three pints. But as I told you, you. It's not. It does. It's not like that. It's like me going having a glass of beer or half a glass of wine and getting into the car and See, driving. Uh, uh, Would be okay about. Okay, that. but why bother? Why bother? I told you why. There's no point in me repeating myself. I told you why because I choose to take that instead of drugs that the doctor would give me because it works and it's natural and I don't want to be. Okay, but stay, stay there for a second because uh, Patrick, you lost. Uh, a friend who's on his way home from his 21st to a driver who's under the influence of, of drugs. That's uh, right, Adrian, and I'm bloody fuming listening to the bullshit that's being talked there. I hope that's the guards catch talking. your man, Stephen, and lock him up, to be honest with you. For what? I'm, uh, for what? You're breaking I'm very, the law. I'm very, I'm very, Shut I'm very up, very you bad guy. Don't shut up and give everybody else a chance. Just phone. shut your mouth. Shut no, your mouth. Hang on, Stephen, let Patrick speak. Shut your mouth. Okay, let There's Patrick no speak. Shut okay, relax, Shut Patrick. Anyone, Patrick, go on. What did you want to say? Shut it. Go on. Yeah, I lost a good friend, and when the coroner's inquiry came through, your man was so badly impaired, and it was from smoking a spliff, or a number of spliffs, and the coroner said he was so impaired, it's a wonder he could even get the key into the bloody car. My friend was killed walking home. He mounted the footpath and killed him. Pinned him to the wall, Adrian, and killed him. Okay, now, uh, uh, Stephen's uh, yeah, actually uh, hanging up, he's after hanging up his phone, but he was arguing that he's only smoking one, so he's not doing any harm. Adrian, that was his argument. Adrian, if I have one drink, my friend, or you have one drink, okay, and we go out and we hit somebody or we have a crash, automatically we're in the wrong. Yes. We're impaired. I'm asking people, please think before you get in a car, whether it's drink or it's a spliff or whatever it is, please don't do it. You'll destroy a life. You'll destroy not only your own life, but an innocent person. You'll destroy another family. So please, I'm sorry, Adrian. I had, I couldn't listen to him. I'm sorry. I just couldn't. Well, he's gone now, but... Um the fact of the matter is, that he is not alone. Um, and we mentioned that there's been a 700% increase in the amount of people uh, done for drug driving. Now, that's a 700% increase over nothing because we didn't have these tests before. But you are pleading with people who may contemplate driving their car under the influence of drugs not to. Yeah, please, please, because... You'll not only, not only that, even if you only think of your family, if you're your wife, your kids, your girlfriend, whatever, please don't do it. You, you could destroy your own life and destroy somebody else's lives. It isn't worth it, Adrian. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry now, I, I'm just absolutely livid here. All right, I, I can understand that after losing a friend on his way home from his... Uh, you know, his and listen, I'm sorry no, no, for no, shouting I, I get it. over right. the phone and that, okay, I... Uh, Thanks apologize. Okay. I apologise to you. I'm not apologising to him. Okay, good to talk to you, Patrick, and thanks very Adrian. much. Indeed. Thank you very much for your time. Take Thank care. You. Bye. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. The Voice of the City. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. With Adrian Kennedy. We're live every morning from 10 on 98 FM.